and welcome to Mostly Rational. I'm Asia Sanchez. And I'm Tawny Sanchez. And together, we two sisters run a podcast occasionally. <laughs> Sometimes. When we feel like it. <sighs> but we like to say we're going to do it on a regular basis. Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. I know we do this a lot, where we say, all right, we're going to really get, we're going to stick to our schedule once a month. And then last last time, we were like, okay, we're going to do once a week. We're going to see, we're going to do that. Forget this once a month thing. It's going to be once a week. And now it's been like two months <laughs> or something. So forget that. Scratch that. What we're actually going to do is just... See how it goes. And also, uh, if you are a Patreon supporter, don't worry. I'm going to change it so that your pledges only go through when we create an episode. So change your pledges accordingly. I will be doing that later this evening. <laughs> so, Tawny, explain to the people what it is we do here. Um, what it is we do here. We answer questions as rationally as possible. We make really dumb jokes and... On occasion, I laugh like a goose. Yes, she really does. Like a horrible, horrible, untitled goose. Tawny, have you heard of the Untitled Goose Game? No, I haven't, which is why the, you referencing it is not funny and not causing any <laughs> goose-like laughter. Oh, okay, so there's a game now, and it's called Untitled Goose Game, which I guess it's, is its title. And uh, I think you're just a goose, and you go around wrecking stuff like wrecking the town and people love it and I haven't gotten to play it yet and I feel like it's something that's missing from my life. Is it a board game? Oh no, it's on Steam, I think. Oh, I was gonna say I was gonna ask if it's a board game and then I was gonna ask if it's like a game you play in real life and you just actually go around wrecking things, because that'd be fun. Oh I don't I haven't seen any real life goose game. But I bet somebody's out there making that YouTube video right now. I sure hope so. So, Tawny, how are things out on the East Coast? On the East Coast, well, currently my roommate is fighting a cold, and I am fighting whatever she's fighting. Oh, you're I fighting think. together. And uh, so, if there's sniffles and coughs, I apologize. And uh, things are fine. They're getting colder, and it's nice fall weather out here. And I have a new job as an office assistant. Although I would like to get back to programming, not gonna lie. And that's pretty much it. I have a few friends coming to visit at the beginning of November, and then and then I'm gonna be in Texas at the end of November, shooting a wedding. And that's the summary of my life. Cool. How's the West Coast? Um, on the West Coast, let's see, we've got Power outages, fires, earthquakes, tsunami warnings, and sunshine and good times out here in California. So, just, you know, the norm. I'm not a fan of sunshine. Um, the, no, sunshine's great. Everything's great. I didn't, did I say something bad? Did I say something that would imply that it's kind of like a hellscape out here in California right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. It's it's pretty nice. There's there's um you know, the leaves are turning colors and the temperatures are dropping a bit and the wind is blowing, which is making PG and E freak out and think that the wind will start fires, so they're turning off our power and then we're getting fires down in Southern California anyway. It's great. It's all good. Yeah, sounds good. Um should we get to our questions? I don't see any reason why not. We've discussed the weather, so what else is there to talk about? Um, all right, so our first question is from Josiah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to t- sound that out? Or <laughs> his, <laughs> I was reading his username and couldn't remember his actual name. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because, you know, like, people, you know, you just start to recognize them or remember them by their Instagram name. It's kind of sad. Josiah asks... <laughs> What is the creepiest thing someone has done to you, and vice versa? Oh, my goodness. I had a couple kind of creepy teachers in high school, but I'm not sure I want to go into that. Same. Uh, yeah. Hashtag me too, you know? (laughs) 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 What's the creepiest thing you've done to somebody else? Creepiest thing I've done to somebody else? Uh, um... I went through somebody's emails once. 
me too. To be fair, they gave me their password. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, in my defense, to be fair, I guess their password. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Did we already no, talk they about... they gave me their password. I think we already talked about you going through their emails on a different episode. I don't know. Seems like it could have come up. Yeah. I was given a password to look at a specific email of theirs, which I don't know why they didn't just forward it to me, but... Uh, <laughs> Nope. I logged in, and then I got to see all of the emails, and, um... Tawny, Tawny, um, Tawny! I'm not sharing it with the world. <laughs> you kind of are right now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I I assume you and this person are are still on good terms? Uh, we're not on any terms. I haven't spoken to them in probably about ten years. Do, do, so. do they know about this email situation? Probably not, and I doubt they're listening. Well... As a little surprise, right here in the studio, behind this curtain, I have got... <laughs> you don't even know who it I is. I know, I don't know who it is. Yeah. Poor Tawny. She was young. Anyway. She was young and unethical, you guys, so don't worry about it. Um, uh, uh, What I did was basically the same. It was somebody, I made their email address for them, but then I ended up logging in and I guessed their password because I knew them so well. And I wasn't like, you know, going into their private stuff, but they just weren't the, I made their email address for them because they weren't the kind of person who would make an email address for themselves and they needed to for school. And then I went in and I would just like delete their spam and stuff because they weren't taking care of it and I wanted them to see their important emails. <laughs> They're important emails from you. So I was also, no, not from me. <laughs> I was also much younger, you guys. I, I would not do that now. Okay, just as a, a reassurance to everybody. Uh, your emails are all safe and private. Well, from me. Not from literally anybody else. Not from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Um, creepiest thing, I'm trying to think of, like, creepy things someone has done to me. I've had someone at a gas station compliment my toes. <laughs> oh, that's pretty creepy! <laughs> you have nice they toes! Called them, they called my toes sexy. <gasps> Are you serious? <laughs> Actually, yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, no. Something along those lines. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think I can top that. <laughs> I mean, it's like I kind of can because I've gotten various comments on on the internet and stuff, but that's not the same as being there in person in real life and somebody calling your toes sexy. Ugh. I've actually had I've had um worse things happen. Oh, you know, there's actually, so there's just different ki kinds of creepy, and I don't know what Josiah's going for, because I've had um things where people were just straight up, like, creeps, like, disgusting and awful, and I've also had people do, like, scary practical joke sort of things. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, the first time I ever watched that movie, When a Stranger Calls, I was watching it, it was on TV. And I was watching it alone, and I was in the living room, and I got a call from an unknown number while I'm watching it, and it was like, Tawny, where are your sisters? And I was like, what the? And so I, I get up, and I <laughs> I immediately like look out the window, but it's dark outside, so I couldn't really see anything. And then I go, and I find you guys, and you're just like in your room, and I was just I was like, what is happening? Who would know I'm watching this? You know? And it wasn't you guys. Like, you weren't on the phone. It was too deep of a voice or whatever. Like, I could tell it was actually, it was a guy. And I was like, who knows I'm watching this? And then I realized that I had told our friend Sean uh... earlier that day that I planned on watching it because I saw that it was going to be on TV. Typical and Sean he behavior. the time. <laughs> and... He remembered the time when he called me. He blocked his number. And so I texted him. I was like, very funny. And he was like, ah, ha, ha. Which, yeah, that was like a creepy thing. Um, 
but you know, practical joke type of creepy. And then there's other types of creepy that have happened, but I honestly don't care to share those <laughs> to with the public. So yeah, uh, man, I just know that I, I'm gonna we're gonna finish recording this, and I'm gonna think of something creepy because I just forget things, you know, and then I randomly remember them. So you block them out. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go on to our next question? Uh, sure. So next we have a question from Travis. And Travis, oh, it looks like he sent us a question about romance this time instead of his usual subject. Awesome. Okay. If you could go on a date with any character from Star Wars. Never mind. Okay. If you could go on a date with any character from Star Wars, typical Travis behavior, which would it be and why? I'm thinking, um, Finn. Because I feel like that would be a really cute date. And he'd probably, like, do mm-hmm. cute stuff. Or Poe, mm-hmm. because he's cute. <laughs> um, you would date that, 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 that one robot, wouldn't you? The tall, sassy one. <laughs> so when I first saw this, <laughs> that was my initial of reaction. Course. But I was, <laughs> just as, cause it's funny. Um, he's my favorite, like, character, but I was thinking Poe. Ooh. Would you go on a date with Anakin? Like, pre-Dark Side? Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> might be fun. Noxious child. You might get killed. <laughs> oh, that? Well, in that case. Well, I just mean, you know, it would be pretty adventurous. Probably because he'd do something, like, <clears throat> really obnoxious and get everyone in trouble. Yeah, I'm good. Did you ever get very far in Clone Wars? I haven't watched it in a while. Uh, you know, I took a break from it, and then I switched Netflix accounts and forgot to put it back on my list. Yeah. And so I forgot to I, go back. To I kind of go through big but, stretches without watching it, and then I'll watch a bunch, and then I'll not watch it, and then I'll watch a bunch. Yeah. I got, um, really into taking screenshots of the captions from that show. So good. Because... They're hilarious. Ominous whooshing. Uh, <laughs> ominous whooshing. That sounds like uh, Doctor Who, though. Foreboding music. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Cool. Thanks for another Star Wars question, Travis. All right. Yep. Next question. Math is a part of the universe. Do you think we speak in time signatures unknowingly? I don't know who this question is from, but... Um... Is math a part of the universe, or is math the universe? I think you could say math is in everything. I wouldn't say math is a part of the universe. I'd say math is the language of the universe. As in, it's like a language that we've created to communicate with the physics and the natural laws around us. (laughs) Dang it, this is not coming out very eloquently. (laughs) Do you know what I mean, though? Because we observe that one and one becomes two. And therefore, we have these symbols that communicate that that relationship with reality. Yes, I know what you're saying. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so thanks for explaining what math is. Shut Asia. up! <laughs> so the question... <laughs> do you think we speak in time signatures unknowingly? I'm going to say no. I don't think that we do. What? Yeah, we only do that knowingly. And only if we're rappers. Or poets. (laughs) Or singers. Or Shakespearean actors. I've been speaking in iambic pentameter this whole time. No, (laughs) we all just heard that math speech. Yeah, but if you go back and rewind the tape. (laughs) No, no, no. And read it backwards. (laughs) (laughs) Then you'll find I'm lying. You have wasted your time. That's what you've done. (laughs) Okay. We have two more questions, and they're both from some guy. I feel like we barely spent any time on those last questions. (laughs) That's because they don't require that much time. And I just... My answer is no. That's it. I don't... Do I have to give an explanation every time? You don't think that there's a certain musicality to our speech and its relationship to the passage of time and therefore space? Only when planned. I am fluent in gobbledygook. (laughs) 
That's for sure. <laughs> we actually had another question, but it didn't seem relevant to to answer in this podcast. Somebody sent in the question, how tall do you think that lumberjack actually is? And they were responding to a photo I posted on my story of a statue of Paul Bunyan. And the answer to that is, insert how tall Paul Bunyan was. Tony, I don't know how tall Paul Bunyan was. <laughs> okay, Google. How tall was Paul Bunyan? I like how I say was, like he was a real person. And <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Bunyan was a powerful giant, seven feet tall and with a stride of seven feet. He was famous throughout the lumbering districts for his great physical strength. Seven feet tall? That's it? Was he a real person? Because we definitely have seven foot tall people. That is not like the cartoon at all. And the statue is way taller than seven feet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that that's how tall he was supposed to be in the original story. I don't know. My goodness, that's barely even worth a legend. Now I'm glad we answered this question. Yeah. <laughs> says us five foot people. Um, I'm five foot three and three quarters. Thank you very much. You're only three quarters of an inch taller than me. You're. Did you shrink? No, five foot three and three quarters. I'm five three. I thought you were five two. Oh, Kiri's, Kiri's five, five two. two. My goodness, we. And a half. Genetics, huh? Genetics. <laughs> We're all so close. Anyway, we've got two more questions uh -huh. from some guy. At Should I uh, list their email? <laughs> no. <laughs> <We've> <laughs> <laughs> we have two more questions from some guy. First question, desert island scenario. You get to take one tool, one person, and one full meal. What and who would you take, Asia? All right, one tool. I would take, um, goodness, it's so hard to choose one tool. I guess I would take Dane Cook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one tool, I don't know, a saw? A saw would probably come in handy, yeah, sure. for, for cutting sure. stuff up. Or maybe a knife. I should probably bring a knife. One person. Uh, who's a person who's good at islands? Um, maybe that host a survivor. JK, he looks like a wimp. <laughs> I would bring, um, Chris Hemsworth. He seems pretty strong. He can do stuff. Would that be inappropriate? I'll build a separate bungalow with my saw. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll bring Captain Marvel. And one full meal, I will bring, um, bottomless breadsticks. From Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Just that oh magic bowl of breadsticks. <laughs> A waitress has to come swimming <laughs> across the ocean every time I run out. That's your person. That's who you. That's who you bring. A waitress oh, from Olive Garden. Yeah, I'll bring the person from Olive Garden. <laughs> that sounds like a fair a fair deal. <laughs> Okay, how about you? <laughs> uh, my tool would be a knife. And um, my person. I still can't think of a person. <sighs> They're usually bipedal humanoid creatures. Uh, you probably haven't seen one for a while, but they... <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually leave my house for work now. Ugh, um, yuck. I know, right? Um, although I've been trying to get my work uh, set up remotely so I don't, I don't have to do that anymore. Nice. Um, one person who would not drive me insane after a few days? Me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what? You no, know, I think I'd bring Kiri. What? Kiri? <laughs> She's twice as strong as both of us and we get along perfectly fine. What? Yeah. You've never fought with Kiri? Uh... Not really. I mean, not on our own. Wow. Not much. Anyway, not since we were, like, kids. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyway, and then uh, one full meal. Um, well, since Asia took the magical breadsticks, <laughs> which is the clear answer, um, I'm wondering if I should just 
eat something that I'm allergic to and then just die so I don't have to try and <laughs> live in this desert island that scenario. That is the most millennial answer I've ever heard. <laughs> okay. If we are, we, we, we told the people we try to answer these questions as rationally as possible. And here I am talking about magic breadstick bowls. So I'm going to revise okay. that answer to my real answer, which would be something that involves a lot of whole fresh fruits and vegetables from which I could take the seeds and plant more food. That's a pretty good answer. It's street smarts. Island smarts. Can you plant those fruits and vegetables Beach smarts. in a desert island? It won't be a desert when I'm done with it. Uh, it says desert island scenario, so I'm just wondering how much uh, dirt you're going to have to work with. Uh, There's so... always at least one palm tree on those little cartoons of desert islands, <laughs> so you know something can grow here. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I'm just gonna choose my favorite meal, which would be like steak and potatoes or something. Okay, I guess you could plant half a potato, but you're probably just gonna eat the whole potato. Potatoes, actually. I probably, I mean, yeah, you could plant potatoes. Yeah. I would, I would leave one of those potatoes raw and let it sprout. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I changed my mind about the person I would bring. Who did you say before? Oh, uh, the Olive Garden waitress. I would bring. Oh, yeah. Delete. I would bring the president. The president? Because you because know he's... someone's going to come get us. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, they got their man. own plane. We're all good. Okay, but... All right. Well. They'll probably shoot me for kidnapping the president, but, you know, get off this island one way or another. So, um, you want to be on a desert island with donald trump i i just said the president because i don't know if i'm gonna get stuck on this island before or after the new elections let's move on <laughs> well you know we also don't know if we're gonna get stuck on this desert island you know when we live in the future where we have these like cellular devices that reach every part of the earth from wherever where this desert island is and okay Tony, this desert Actually, island I mean, is not gonna have a... phone signal <laughs> In the future, when Donald Trump is not our president. Oh, I forgot that Donald Trump is what's holding us back from Desert Island phone signal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about you don't know what we will have in the future. Like you saying, you don't know what president we're going to have in the future. Tony, in the future, if you're going that far in the future, we're not even going to have islands anymore. Yeah. Because okay. the glaciers are going to be all melted. <laughs> well. I'm going to have beachfront property by then. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting too political. <laughs> <clears throat> Last question from some guy. Would you like to ask Asia? Ask Asia what? What art form have you always <laughs> thought would be interesting to try, <laughs> but have not yet put any time into learning? Parentheses. For me, any large-scale sculpting seems like it could be fun, particularly ice sculpting. Well, they took mine. Close parentheses. <laughs> They took yours? Was that really? Yes. I want to sculpt. I've always wanted to try sculpting marble, even though I know I would instantly get mad at the fact that I'm bad at it and it's hard and takes too long. <laughs> but it still looks fun at the same time, you know? So maybe I should try ice sculpting because I don't know. Actually, no, because the idea of like the scraping on the ice gives me goosebumps. I don't like that. Like what if I accidentally scratch the ice with my nails? <laughs> I would like to try like those the making one of those really big fancy sand castles. Hmm. Those look fun. Yeah, I don't really want to spend much time learning an art form that's going to melt or get washed away within the day. That's the best kind cuz you don't have to spend any money on materials and people take pictures of it and then it's you gone. You don't know how expensive ice is though? Not sand though. Whatever. How expensive is ice? I have no idea. <laughs> it's pretty expensive. To get a big old block of ice? Yeah. How do you know this? Have you looked into it? <laughs> I remember one time we had a big block of ice and we were sliding down it on a hill on our butts. Someone was telling me a story recently about how they got a big block of ice for some party or something. And they said how much it was. And I was like, holy cow. Anyway. That's how. That's how um, it was holy cow <laughs> amount. <laughs> um, the art form I always thought would be interesting to try, but have not yet put time into learning. That's mostly just me learning musical instruments and stuff, getting good at composing music, but I haven't put the time into it. You've learned music, though. Yeah, but I'm not any good. 
Well, you learned you learned flute, so I feel like you can't count music. Okay, well, I'd like to put more effort into string instruments. <laughs> also, I paint, but I've always wanted to try to paint on a really, really, really big canvas. You know, like a huge one that you need a whole room to 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 paint in and slap it all on there. Be really messy and like like oh ho, ho, I am a painter lady and a big smock. Like Hal from Malcolm in the Middle. Yes. Just when like he that. does too many layers of paint and then it he gets it perfect and it collapses on him. Yes. Cool. <laughs> so I've been uh, spending time lately to learn how to paint because I never really painted before. I've only done a couple of paintings in my life and they were awful. And uh, I still am really bad at painting, but I'm learning and practicing. Um, I think, though, that before I get too far into what I am learning, I want to learn oil painting because I've been using acrylic and I kind of hate it. I feel like acrylic painting feels the result just looks like a child's coloring book to me, like that level of class. And I don't like it. some people can make <laughs> acrylics look really good, but it is hard to not make them look juvenile. I agree. Oils. Yeah. I just, Oh, there's so much work and they're so, they take so long to dry and you have to like use chemicals and stuff. See, I don't mind that. And I, I've done one of the paintings I did years ago was oil. And I think I liked, I liked that. The sunflower. I like being able to take my time. Actually, I think that was a combination of oil and acrylic. I think that actual flower was acrylic. What's weird, though, is how the paint changes color when it dries, like, significantly with oil and acrylic. When I painted that uh, background for that flower photo, that was the background was oil, and I painted it, like, a blue color, and it went green. Yeah, you gotta count for that. Uh, um, anyway. I also would like to... I bought some... I'll show you right now because we're Skyping. I bought this roll of gold wire because I have been collecting pretty rocks and I want to make some jewelry, but I, I don't really know how to make jewelry. So I'm gonna have to watch some YouTube videos, I guess. Um, and I've always wanted to do more fashion design stuff. I, I, I draw clothes. Like I've been drawing clothes and design since I was a kid, but I really don't know how to sew. <laughs> so that's pretty much what's holding me back there. You should ask Romy about the, um, if she could show you some jewelry stuff. She makes jewelry. Yeah. I just don't want to get... I don't want to... I want to know the actual techniques of securely wrapping and, and drilling and everything. I don't want to look too much at other people's stuff, though, because I want to try and come up with my own style. I don't want to be too heavily influenced by other people's styles. Yeah. I'm still trying to think of an art form that I haven't put much time into learning. Um, Sidewalk chalk drawings? <laughs> <laughs> Around dead bodies? Um, oh yeah. I took a career aptitude test and it should be I it should that I should be a forensic scientist or an astronomer. Interesting. I think that I've dabbled in a lot of different kinds of art, like music and painting and drawing and photography and videography. And those are like the primary things I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Design. I think I would like to get more into um graphic design. Yeah. Because it it would be beneficial for building websites, but I want to learn more about it and get um, into it. And recently I actually was learning how to, like I've been taking different courses basically in Illustrator to learn different skills that you can do with that. Um, like learning how to create invitations or um, different parts of websites. I spent website. two years learning how to do that stuff and <sighs> I still feel like I really need to do a significant amount of refreshing when it comes to graphic design. And I really need to get better at digital drawing and digital painting, especially since I have been yeah. commissioned to do a whole lot of it. And I'm putting that off right as we speak. Yep. And also the Adobe programs, they have changed a lot since you got your degrees. So I know it's going to, I feel like I just need to start all over, take the classes all over again. Kind of a bummer. Yeah. I don't recommend that. Anyway potential sponsor plural site i use their website i'm subscribed and you basically pay and you can learn as much as you want and it's like everything you would do on a computer pretty much you know there's uh like all the adobe programs different courses for different things you would do in that like photoshop and lightroom and illustrator 
and and there's also tons of programming courses which is the main reason i signed up anyway yeah i really need to get better at digital painting (laughs) okay well anyway we've listed pretty much every type of art um oh you know what here's okay here's one that i recently said i would like to do and i've never tried before because i have done sculpting i've done ceramics i took that's those are the art classes i took in high school however i would love to learn how to weld dude me too that's what i would like also like carpentry like you know like carving things carving decorations into into desks and furniture and stuff i've always wanted to learn how to carve wood i don't really want to carve but i would like to like create furniture i just don't want it i don't know i don't i don't care for the things that are i guess intricate yeah obviously shut up <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that concludes this episode, episode 17 of Mostly Rational. Do you have anything else you'd like to say before we go, Asia? Yeah. You guys, we can't make this podcast unless you send questions. And I do want to actually start. I know I said this before, but I do want to actually start making them more frequently. Um, The problem is, you know, when Tani and I suddenly get struck by a whim and we're like, hey, let's make a podcast. Oops, we forgot to ask for questions. And then we have like four questions because everyone forgot we existed because we didn't make a podcast. So although we did say we were going to have shorter podcasts. Yeah. So. So don't hesitate. In fact, here's what I recommend. Buy a notebook, title it questions for the pod. And then as you go about your daily life, every time you think of a question, write it down in your little notebook and then send it on over to mostlyrationalpodcast.com on our submit a question section or email it to mostlyrationalpod at gmail.com. Or they could just do that the second they think of the question. No, no. I want everybody to have a notebook, Tawny, because they're going to get home and they're going to be like, oh, didn't I have a question for that podcast? And oh, gosh, I wish I'd written it down. That's what I used to do when I didn't have a phone that had Internet and I would think of things I wanted to Google all day and then I'd get home and forget. And so I started keeping a Google notebook (laughs) to write things down. Well, it's uh, 2019 (laughs) and people have Internet on their phones now. Obviously not. And can immediately go to MostlyRationalPodcast.com. I'm just going to confirm that that's our website. (laughs) I know it is. I have to. It is. I have to reinstate our Podbean account because because uh, our last payment didn't go through. We're so professional. So yeah, it's mostlyrationalpodcast.com dot com or mostlyrationalpod at gmail dot com. That's where you should send us questions, and you can also find us on Instagram at mostlyrationalpodcast. Or Twitter at Mostly Rational. That's probably too much. That's that's all you need. Oh, Patreon.com slash Mostly Rational is also where you can go to pledge a certain amount of money, however much you want. It could be a dollar. could be $10. could be a million dollars per episode. And <laughs> that way we'll have a little extra motivation, I guess, to put out episodes frequently. Because if we don't post our podcast, then you don't have to do anything for us either yeah. also there are little perks you can get though for pledging i think we need to update our perks we do need to update our perks and i i still owe a couple perks so if i still owe you a perk let me know you know i'm super good at follow through but just in case i might have forgotten somebody let me know i'm just kidding i'm specifically talking to tyler sorry tyler yeah we all know we all know tyler i will give you your perk don't worry. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thanks for listening. Yes, thank you for listening. Have a swell day. Tawny, you sound so insincere. <laughs> I'm tired. Do you wish them a swell day or don't you? I wish everyone a very swell day. As swell as it can be. And I wish you all an adequate evening. <laughs> but not a good day. Just an evening.
my back hurts so bad from sitting here. <laughs> I want to I just tried to extend it. <laughs> okay, Tawny, can we watch bears? No. Why? Because <laughs> I'm... <laughs> Why? Uh... Why? Oh, <laughs> I'm stopping my recording. <laughs>